today's video is going to be a look through breakdown and giving my picks for the upcoming UFC 288 Sterling v Cejudo. Um, really looking forward to this fight. Two great fighters and um, it's actually a pretty good card as well. So um, I guess just some uh, info on the event itself. It's going to be in Britain. It's going to be start at 3 a.m. which means the uh, prelims will probably start at 1 a.m. and the early prelims at about 11 p.m. on Saturday and the event is taking place in the Prudential Center in New York, United States. Okay so the main card boasts of five fights. You have a, a four fight prelims and then a three fight early prelim as well. So what we'll do is we'll go through each one, give a little bit of a breakdown on the fighters, um, the records, where they're from, etc, 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 etc. And then just give a, just a, a, a pick, you know, who I think is going to win. And we'll do that for each fight. But for the main and co-op main, we'll look further in depth into the four fighters in the main and co-main events. And we'll have a little bit more of a breakdown on them, them people, as they deserve it for this spot. Okie dokie. Um, it's also been raining really, 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 really heavy today. So if there's a lot of background noise, I'm so sorry. I apologise. But it's been like a torrential rain. And the cars are coming past and I can hear them. So, yeah. I do apologise in advance for that. But I digress. I digress. I digress. First fight of the night is Joseph Holmes. Joseph Holmes from the United States. Versus Claudio Ribeiro. Claudio Ribeiro of Brazil. So Joseph Holmes is 8 and 3. Claudio Ribeiro is 10 and 3. This is in the middleweight division as well. Both guys have not gone the distance when they've won. So Joseph Holmes has a 75% submission ratio with a 25% KO ratio. Claudio Ribeiro was not come from KO. Six foot. Phil Hawes is known for his knockout and his power punches, whereas Ikram is a bit more of a versatile fighter. He's, um, you know, as you can see by his uh, stats, he's like a third KO, a third submission, a third de decision, whereas Phil Hawes is two thirds of KOs. So, yeah, it's either going to be a Phil Hawes KO. I could even see Ikram uh, grinding out the decision win here. But I'm going to go for the man, Phil Hawes. And this is the uh, featured early prelim. And this is Braxton Smith versus Pardon Borg. Now I believe this is Braxton Smith's first fight in the UFC. Whereas Pardon Borg is a bit more of a veteran. Braxton Smith does have some hands though as we can see on 
the stats. Five on one and all five wins have come up via TKO. Bad Apolka, he is 13 and 8, but he has first and fought a much higher caliber of, uh, of opponents compared to Braxton Smith. Um, and he's a bit more versatile, he can finish on the ground by submission. has a chin. Both of these guys can crack. This is this fight ain't gonna go the distance. Um, I think Matt Pipolola is gonna throw everything on the kitchen sink at Drew Dober. He's gonna suck it all up and he's gonna throw a bomb back and knock Matt Pipolola out. I mean, I've watched Drew Dober for a number of years and he just seems to It's going to be my pick without looking at anything else. Um, I think Drew Dope has got ex experience in the cage. He's fought some really high caliber people and um, he's got a chin and a half. He can take anything on the kitchen sink. And then once he gets dishes it back, mostly then people. Yeah, 
is a featherweight bout, number 10 ranked Morfza Evloev versus Diego Lopez. So this fight was actually supposed to be um, Morfza Evloev versus Bryce Mitchell, but Bryce Mitchell had a bout due to injury, so Diego Lopez has stepped up on a few days notice. Um, to get himself into the UFC. So, <laughs> Mosfa Evluev, I don't know how to pronounce his name, he should win this fight, but I think Diego Lopez has come off a two-fight win streak and has impressed his last few fights, so we can see how this goes. I wish all the best to Diego Lopez, I hope he wins. I just doesn't, I just do not see that happening. Whatsoever. Okay. Then there's a women's strawweight bout. Number fourth ranked Jessica Andrade, ex UFC champion, future Hall of Famer, versus number sixth ranked Chinese Yan Xuanan. This is a really good fight. As we can see, Jessica Andrade is a 190 favourite. However, it's going to be a very close fight because Yan Xiaonan has been coming into her own recently. Jessica Andrade has a variety of experience, very experienced in the UFC. But Yan Xiaonan has 19 fights herself, so she's not. The story will either tell, either Jessica Andrade is just too good for the Chinese, Yan, or is Jessica Andrade getting on a bit? Is she taking too much punishment throughout her career? And can the Chinese Yan Xiaonan book herself into the next title shot against the current Chinese champion and get a main event in China within the next year? for that region. Okay, so then we go into the co-main event, which is Bella Mohammed versus Gilbert Burns. So let's take a little bit of a deeper dive into these two men. First, we look at Gilbert Burns. fighting out of Boca Raton, Florida, born in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. He has a pro MMA record of 22 wins and 5 losses. His worldwide ranking is number 4 current best MMA worldweight fighter. Number 7th ranked fighter of the year for 2022, uh, 2020, sorry. Number 8th MMA fighter of the year for 2023, and if he gets this win, he'll be top 5. Okay, he fights out of Kilcliffe FC and Cerrado MMA. In the UFC, he's been fighting in the UFC since 2014. He's got 15 wins and 5 losses. And we'll just have a little look at his... So then had two cancel bouts with Kamado Usman. Unfortunately, when that fight was eventually made, he did lose to Kamado Usman. He did drop Kamado Usman in the first round, and it looked like he was going to get the finish, but Kamado came on strong and ended up finishing Gilbert Burns. He's then had a win via decision over Rafael Lovato Jr., and then in the following on that, he has another decision win over Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. Um, okay, that was a grappling event. He did lose to Kamzat Shemaev. However, he actually had more praise and more stock from that fight than any of the wins he has. Because it was such a close fight, it could have gone either way. It was fight of the year. 2022 and some people thought that uh, 
16 and 2. Nicknamed the Messenger, or as we all know him, Triple C. His pro MMA record is 16 and 2. He has a current streak of 6 wins. He's fighting out of Phoenix, Arizona, and was born in Los Angeles, California. He was the 4th ranked fighter of the year for 2018. Number 4th ranked fighter of the year for 2019. He's ranked 16 as the greatest MMA fighter of all time. 16 fighter of the year for 2020. He fights out of fight ready MMA. Okay, and in the UFC, he's 10 and 2 overall. Okay, so his only two losses were against Demetrius Johnson and Joseph Benavides. Um, okay, so we'll go from 20 centimeters. So, he beat, back in 2017, Wilson Reese via TKO in the second round. He beat Sergio Pettis, the current Bellator champion, via decision back in December 2017. August 2018, he beat Demetrius Johnson via split decision. Demetrius Johnson is regarded as one of the greatest of all time. He then beat TJ Dillashaw via KO in the first round to defend the belt that he won took off Demetrius Johnson. He then versed Marlon Moraes for the, no, the fights before were all flyweight, 125 pounds. He moved up in weight to fight for the 135 belt and he beat Marlon Moraes via ground and pound in the third round. He then had a cancel bout against Jose Aldo and then beat Dominic Cruz again, another person who was considered the greatest of all time in that weight class. And he beat him via knees and punches, so a KO in the second round. And now he has Aljamain Cerudo and Larkin Breck um, knows him for being this cringy personality, but he's an Olympic champion, a two-weight world champion in the UFC. He's not to be sniffed at. He's a very technical, very intelligent fighter, and he could definitely get it done this weekend against Aljamain Sterling. However, Aljamain Sterling, he's an athlete in his own right. He's a very good fighter. Aljamain Sterling, the funk master. He has an eight fight win streak. He's fighting out of Cortland, New York. Born in the United States. He's also represented Jamaica as well. He's the number one to the number one current best bantamweight fighter. He's number six fighter of the year for 2022, number six current best pound for pound MMA fighter, and he fights out of Sarah Jiu Jitsu Gym. In the UFC, he's 14 and 3. So we'll have a look at these fights then. Okay, so it's 2017. He had a split decision loss against Rafael Asenso. He then beat Augusto Mendes and Renan Burrell via decision. He then lost against Marlon Moraes via a knee, a via knee. It was a savage. It was supposed to be, supposed to be a kick, but as uh, as he was throw as um, Marlon Moraes threw the kick. Aljamain Sterling bent down to uh, um, go to grapple and then he hit the face and he was out. He then came back and beat ranked fighters such as Brett Johns. Brett Johns, who was um, 15 and 0 at the time, beat Brett Johns by 
decision. He beat Cody Stame, summoned Fire and New Bar. He beat Jimmy Rivera by decision. Pedro Munoz by decision. Cody Sandhagen via Rear Naked Choke. He then controversially won against Peter Yan um, as Peter Yan threw an illegal knee. They had a rematch back in 2022 and he avenged. Um, I get it, he won, but it was in a way more fair, fair circumstances. Was the better fighter on the day and deserved to win, so retained his belt. He then this year and he beat TJ Dillashaw via TKO in round two. Okay, so both of these fighters are, are great fighters. <coughs> the question is how good is uh, Henry Cejudo? Um, he was a 125 pounder and he moved up to 135 and had two wins there. But how good is he really? isn't actually that good. Well, Dominic Cruz was he out of his depth back then. He was coming back from lots of injuries, getting older. Um, was it a case of right place, right time for Henry Soto? And Aljamain Sterling is currently right in such a way. He's such a good fighter. But Henry Soto is tricky. He's slick, very experienced. Like I said, the Olympic champion. And Aljamain Sterling prides himself on his grappling wrestling. He's not going to not wrestle Henry Soto. He's an Olympic gold medalist. So it's going to be interesting to see how both of them fare off. You just take a look at the grappling here. Henry Soto has a 93% takedown defense. 93% takedown defense. Whereas Aljamain Sterling's takedown accuracy isn't that good. It's going to be interesting. I've got Artem and Stillman in the fight. I think he's got too much for him. He's younger. He's fresher. He's fitter. He's more active. He's the bigger guy. And he has more tools in the toolbox. But can Henry Soto do it one more time? Can he defy history? Can he make history for himself? We'll see tomorrow.